Welcome, Alessandra Guerra. Did you I go. do it? You did I did it. it. Yeah. We are where? <laughs> In Miami. Yeah. I'm Decentral. originally from here. Indie Central Conference in Miami. Miami. Yes. Here's the problem. The air how, conditioning. How long? That's part of it. <laughs> how long will Miami exist? Man, I don't know. Depends on what we actually can achieve. So we're talking about climate change, right? And sea level rise. We're talking about sea level rise, climate change, with. Guys, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Alessandra. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. She, she said the name. Yeah. <laughs> she said the name. Of or, Nori. Of Nori. Or Ale. If, if, Ale. 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 Yes. Ale. Of Nori. First of all, thank you so much for uh, joining thank us you. here on this podcast. We're really, really happy to have you here. Thank you. Uh, interesting name, Nori, and a big challenge that you're working on. Mm. And this is huge and it's mm. concerning to me and I'm sure a lot of other listeners. So before we get into this very deep, technical, and huge problem that we all have to work in solving, tell us a little bit something about you, how you got here, and why you do what you do. And I'm particularly interested how you came up with the name of Nori. Okay, those are two, two separate questions, but I'll get to them. Okay, I perfect. can remember two things. Um, so, <laughs> uh, well, I, Have you heard of, not heard of blockchain? I have. And Metaverse? Oh, yeah. So now four <laughs> things. So. Yeah, four. <laughs> <laughs> Me, Ale, Nori, Blockchain, Metaverse. Um, so I'm originally from Miami, Florida. I did s- just move back last year after four, 14 years away. So... Um, imagine a much younger version of me. I was 15, super nerdy. I was always watching the Science Channel. And um, there was this limited series for, uh, called Ecotech. It was only nine episodes. And one of the, the episodes was on uh, pollution or air pollution emissions, gr- uh, global warming. And I saw this professor from Columbia University um, in New York City talking about this technology that that they were working on called direct air capture where they could essentially create an artificial tree. Imagine like a a machine, it looks like a vent. Uh, And it would essentially absorb any CO2 um, from the air that was passed over it and essentially do the same thing that trees do, right? But with the power of a thousand trees in the same area. And so they had shown in the Science Channel as they do in the depictions like a rendering of what it would look like to have these things in Central Park, right? Sequestering, which is the term that we use, or removing carbon from the atmosphere um, at a much higher rate so that we could reverse our impact on climate change or what they called global warming at the time. And that was uh, about 18 years ago. And I was hooked. So I, I really wanted to go to Columbia. I actually got in. I studied with that professor. So I have a, a bachelor's in environmental engineering. And then I started my PhD. Uh, but then I discovered I was an entrepreneur mid PhDs, I dropped out with a master's, um, again, in engineering and climate change and how to uh, produce energy in a way that doesn't as much, as much carbon. And this is all I've ever wanted to do because I'm from Miami and it struck me. I, I, I knew very early on that global warming was gonna cause uh, melting sea uh, uh, ice caps, which is gonna cause the sea level to rise. Uh, so as a 15 year old, I was just panicked. I don't know. I don't know why, but you know, you just have these moments that sure. st- just stick with you. And it has stuck with me to this day that for 18 years, that's all I've ever done is study climate change, the, uh, the emissions that we uh, emit every year, what c- we can do as a society. And now after learning that I was an entrepreneur, trying to apply that all together. Uh, and here I am, a founder of Nori, a five-year-old startup company. Should I talk about Nori? Yes. What's the name talk of Nori? Talk about Nori. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about me. Uh, Nori is, um, we are a carbon removal marketplace, meaning we sell rights to carbon removal. We find people who remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We create digital representations of this on the blockchain. There, there we go. Um, <laughs> and we sell these as NFTs. Uh, that some metaverses have. Yes! <laughs> I did it. Um, anyway, so we do sell these uh, rights of carbon removal as NFTs, and they're retired and burnt, uh, and they can't be reclaimed because we want every time someone pays for carbon removal to that dollar to provide additional carbon removal from the atmosphere. So if anyone who's listening is familiar with carbon offsets in general and other schemes, they, they might think that they can trade these these assets that we have at Nori, but we don't. We just want 
constant throughput because there's 1.5 trillion tons of excess CO2 that we have emitted since the uh, Industrial Revolution. When you say 1.5 million tons of excess is based on what level? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, 300 parts per million, it's a, it's a measure of concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. And so, uh, and this number was the number from five years back uh, when we first started. We like kind of did a calculation of it, but uh, so it might need some readjusted. Maybe 1.6, 1.7. Who knows? Um, well, we could easily do the math because we emit. 40. Well, you a nerd can do the math. I guess <laughs> 40. We, <I'm> we <laughs> emit 40 billion tons of uh, greenhouse gases every year. Yep. I'm just going to ask a simple question. Yeah. If you didn't exist, Nori. Nori. Yeah and other companies didn't do what they're doing about carbon emission and environmental change, mm -hmm. if we took all away all of those initiatives right now, mm -hmm. what would happen to us on Earth in the next 10 years? Well, climate change would continue to accelerate. Um, the concentration of greenhouse gases would um, exponentially increase because as the, this is the part I can already feel my body reacting because this becomes overwhelming. I practice a lot of meditation and yoga um, because if not, it becomes too much. But right now, the ice caps are melting at such a rate that they are, and the permafrost in certain areas and continents are emitting more uh, more potential uh, greenhouse gas gases. So like methane, for example, uh, and it's essentially trapping gas in our atmosphere at a much higher rate than normal. To be honest, uh, I don't know that the humanity could who knows what what would happen um our total ecosystems would change uh we displace at least a third of our populations who live within the coast um within 11 kilometers of the coast um extreme weather conditions are complete our societies would completely change um what vegetation is available what animals are available we're, we're talking about in the extreme right if we did absolutely nothing um and maybe humans, uh, the capacity of humanity to innovate and be resourceful would allow us to continue to survive. But even if it didn't, the planet would still be here. And I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed by planet Earth and I'm very humbled by the fact that um, these little bacteria, did, did you know? I'm also really big into uh, planetary sciences. Uh, the Earth, um, you know, was hit by an asteroid, created the moon, and then we had these oceans, and somehow some amino acid proteins were created in, an ocean, in these oceans on this planet uh, over 40 billion years ago. And then somehow it formed cyanobacteria, a type of bacteria that started to consume the CO2 that was uh, in the oceans and from the atmosphere and started to produce oxygen, right? A C and then two oxygen. So uh, they over a span of hundreds of millions of years essentially terraformed and created our atmosphere. So this planet will be fine. We don't have to worry about planet Earth. It's more of like, where does humanity fit in planet Earth? Uh, good point. Uh, assuming that you, Nori does what Nori does, mm -hmm. and then we've got a whole bunch of, bunch of other initiatives doing what they do, What's the prognosis of actually either containing or reversing the uh, negative climate effects that we're creating? Um, I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, I have stopped looking and reading a lot of that information about four years ago, a year into Nori, because uh, I think at, from a personal perspective, there's only enough... Uh, there's only a certain amount that any one person can do, and I'm doing everything at my all, and I've now just donated my, or just dedicated my entire time and focus and energy into Nori operationally. There are people on my team who, who still, like my colleague, my co-founder asked me, he's like, are you staying in tune? I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm, making, sure th I'm making sure things are running. Like, I, I'm convinced that this is my uh, the solution. But there is a common um, framework people say is we have about 30 years left to make actual change in our uh, in our carbon emissions if we wanted to mitigate the effects. I think at this point it would be very difficult to be... Reverse. Yeah. Com yeah. And it's funny because Nori's tagline is reversing climate change, um, but that is the goal, right? Uh, to essentially go back to 300 parts per million, which uh, is a multi-generational effort. And so what I dream of is 
Nori and all the other entrepreneurs in the cl- carbon removal and climate change space that we are we're planting seeds for um, generations to come innovation in how do we live in harmony in a completely new innovative way because you know I think a lot of people feel like maybe they have to give up everything right like here we are on a podcast and you know in this Glass cube you guys got going on here in a conference room, right? No glass ceiling. Though. Yeah. No, no ceiling though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's good. Very good. Um, and so, all of what we've done so far as a species on this planet has provided incredible creativity and connection, right? Like we are able to connect with people from across the world, um, to communicate, to create new. Th- and who knows? And the sky isn't even the limit. It's like, what about interstellar travel? This is going to happen if we can, you know, uh, have a nice, safe home to, to work from. Uh, so I just think in general, uh, it is a long road, um, but it's all about how we can innovate together on this. What's next for Nori? Oh, man. Um it's really loud. I'm getting slightly distracted by how loud it is over there. Thank you so much. Uh, what's next for Nori? Well, we just announced this huge partnership. So let me give some context of like what we've done so that you can appreciate what's next. Uh, so we started in 2017. And uh, my co-founders and I created a whole new voluntary marketplace for carbon removal, where essentially we lower the verification costs. We just kind of... Sh- uh, challenge the status quo and what carbon registries could or should look like uh, and then we sell these certificates or rights of carbon removal on the blockchain as NFTs which at the time NFTs weren't even really a thing. It took us two years from founding in 2017 and writing our white paper to actually sell our first uh, carbon removal because it's a very robust process you have to come up with a methodology. What is the information you're gathering from projects? How are projects creating? It's a lot of work. Uh, and I was going to conferences and people were laughing at us like, what are you talking about? How are you going to put c- carbon on the blockchain? So at first they laugh at you uh, and then they fight you and then they and then they applaud you, right? I think there's some kind of quote like that. It depends how many they've had to drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the first two or three years there was a lot of laughter. Uh, and then I think in the last couple of years there's been some fighting and now I think people are starting to really accept. Um, so... And I'll explain how they got how we got there. But they laughed for a couple of years, and now it, after selling our first credit in 2019, we've been selling those for three years. And our first year, we generated 14,000 tons of carbon removal. It's not much. That's about a thousand. The the carbon footprint of 1,000 Americans, just under, um, for one year. Uh, the next year, we increased by 80,000. Now we're at over at um, uh, 120,000. Every year we're just constantly increasing and we just announced a couple months ago a huge partnership with Bayer Crop Sciences where they're going to be paying their farmers and their producers to adopt regenerative agriculture practices um, to remove and sequester carbon in their soils. And so this will bring on five to seven times our total amount of of supply. So, I mean, I can keep going, but in general, if if we're talking about how do we sequester 1.5 trillion tons of carbon from the atmosphere, it's that we have to fund and incentivize more projects. And that's why we decided to create a marketplace as opposed to some other type of technology when it comes to climate tech, because we know that financial markets move trillions of dollars. So before we leave this particular thread, okay. you've got an audience captivated do right I? now. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You're captivated. You guys are captivated. Yeah, we're captivated. <laughs> <laughs> what is your ask for the listeners to support you? What do you want? Who do you want uh, to take action? Oh, my God. Okay. I'm just going to start spewing off a bunch because it's an ecosystem, right? Um, first off, if you are an individual, pay to remove uh, carbon from the atmosphere. This is a, This is an all hands on deck situation. It's really simple and you can go to nori.com, N-O-R-I.com. You can pay as an individual to remove carbon. And what is so unique about Nori is when you get a certificate, because a lot of people will give you a certificate for the carbon offset you buy. Ours is more than that. It's uh, again, issued to the blockchain and you have a link directly to the project or projects that you supported. 
and those are updated um, every three years at maximum because we require every year that they provide data because they enter into long-term agreements with Nori and every three years at maximum they have to pay for verification um, and we keep you updated. So this compl provides complete transparency so that you can really trust that there's credibility and long-standing uh, of these projects. So any individual can do that. Any organization, small, medium-sized business or startup can do that. If you're a business and you want to uh, partner with us to co-market or do an event and show that you've, uh, you know, amplify your certificate a little bit more, please reach out to us at Nori's Twitter. Um, it's just, just N-O-R-I on, Nor uh, on Twitter. Um, Sorry, what was that? N-O-R-I? N-O-R-I. I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> people, people will spell it really, really interestingly sometimes. Um, and then I would just say, like, if you are a large organization, definitely pay to remove carbon. I was on a panel yesterday uh, as well for Miami Art Week, and, um, you know, people ask, like, what can we do? And I'm like, if, if I ask the question, do you care about climate change, does it feel like a real problem to you? And you feel yes. And I say, I have a way for you to act on that. Go to Nori.com and pay for carbon removal, and you don't, then I don't want to hear it. I told you, this is what you can do. And if you want more information on other things you could do, we're happy to follow. Uh, we have podcasts. There's two, the Reversing Climate Change podcast and the Carbon Removal Newsroom because we also like to foster community. We feature people like direct competitors and direct anybody in the space who's removing carbon, uh, removing carbon from the atmosphere to address climate change. We feature them because this is a collective effort. So you can also follow those podcasts as well. Additionally, so beyond the whole paying for and supporting carbon removal, you could do projects like if you have a large network of agriculture producers who want to adopt regenerative agriculture practices or some other project that removes carbon, we're happy to talk to you guys. Um, and we need people to know to start developing uh, tools and models for estimating carbon removal. You need to know how much a thing, an action, is contributing to carbon removal or climate change. They're yelling for you. Yeah, yeah totally. That was all for me. All for Nori, yeah. <laughs> Alessandra Guerra. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, there are several ways that we can talk about this. It's like, which will, so there are companies that uh, we're connected with, they're doing stuff in carbon removal or assisting Expo other CC things. There are organizations that are working in Africa and Asia uh, that are educating agriculturists mm -hmm. on what to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can definitely give you connections and support you in that, for sure. Uh, let's talk about, because we're Decentral, Blockchain, NFTs, let's touch on that a little bit to okay. see how this developing ecosystem of new technologies can and will assist you or not? Yeah. Um, so we are a crypto company. Um, we are a climate crypto company. We're just this little intersection of those two bubbles. Uh, Nori's marketplace is built on the blockchain. Uh, we started on Ethereum layer one. We are now uh, migrating to Polygon layer two because you know we've learned and blockchain has iterated. And we, oh, okay, that's a little bit heavy duty for us. Um, uh, we've been partnering with Polygon. They're just incredible partners. Again, our when you purchase a carbon removal credit from Nori, an NRT, we call them Nori Removal Tons, it is issued as an NFT on the blockchain. We are going to be launching the Nori token in the coming year, in 2023. Uh, that will set the price of carbon. Um, right now, we've been selling it at uh, a static price, but you can find all this information at nori.com. Um, and... We also, what's interesting, so not only are we built on the blockchain and we're using all these mechanisms to help build a robust, like, trustable system, we sell to mostly Web3 companies and crypto companies because, uh, I don't know, this space is really cool. I think it's filled with a lot of people who are critical thinkers um, and who are totally fine to ch challenge the status quo and think about things in a new way and decide for themselves like what's good enough and that really value transparency, which is what we do. And this is the ethos that my co-founders and I um, have in our company itself. So it just is a perfect uh, fit. We've partnered um, with Sandbox. So Sandbox has paid to remove carbon with all their NFT transactions through Nori. They've also created NFTs for sale in their metaverse and 
200% of the proceeds go to pay for carbon removal. So that's a fun project. Uh, Rarible has partnered with Nori, paid for some amount of carbon removal, and they also have a webhook that allows any curator to remove carbon associated with one NFT, and then it's labeled with a little green label, so cool. it's carbon negative. Uh, I can keep going, but artists like Imogen Heap, she's a Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter. She contributed 5% of her, of her NFT sales to pay for removing carbon through Nori because climate change is a big issue for her. Uh, so... Yeah, it's just from all aspects of our ecosystem, those who are innovating and using the, the tools and providing transparent solutions, like in the blockchain space, totally align with us. Very cool. So, um, I, I have to throw this question out. Mm. When we come to climate change, everyone or most people I've come across talk about carbon, carbon removal, carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. What else should we be paying attention to? Well, these are the two big ones, right? So we have a tagline too, um, another phrase we use a lot at Nori, which is emit less, remove the rest. Uh, so we need to be everything, we need to do everything we can to just be super efficient. Like if we're gonna emit a molecule of CO2, make it count, make it have done everything possible. So improve the efficiency of our technologies, um, don't be wasteful, that's important. And then removing whatever you did emit and actually removing more so that we can, uh, again, bring that curve back down but what else should we be talking about oh man biodiversity of of land so you know a lot of people are talking about oh we're planting trees but a lot of those projects um are like mono trees and i'm saying not saying they're not good but let's iterate on that concept it's about biodiversity of land and ecosystems um, making sure that all the types of plants that are there so that all the different types of insects and animals can continue to thrive there uh, water Water is a big issue. Like access to clean water is important. Um, I think circular economy in general is an interesting concept where we're thinking about building economies where raw products um, are reused in different ways, right? It's like it doesn't just go in one linear fashion. Like it was mined in this continent, usually in the south, and then shipped and consumed in the north and put in some landfill and then that's just linear. What, what's the circular economy we can create? So, looking at production, agriculture, and usage of land, currently, and maybe in the next five years, 85% of that, all of that agriculture, the production, and manufacturing, is going to happen outside of Europe, America. Mm -hmm. So mostly in Asia and South America. How well are those continents and countries and global economies reacting to the issue that there is a climate problem and not using the old story of like, Europe has done it and have depleted whatever they've, they can, America has done it, and we no, need we to. Now we need to do it. Isn't that so tough, right? Like first empathy for for almost every developing country right like you're on a maslow's hierarchy or needs basis like security and food and community sure. and so the i think it's really on the shoulders of those developed countries um to uh be collaborative and make some sacrifices i don't really know what that looks like i'm not a policy expert at all so huge disclaimer to anybody who's listening to me. It's like it's not that easier. I'm like I don't I don't know what that looks like, um, but I just know that it, it is a difficult thing because it is a global problem and everybody's going to feel the impacts. And I think people in the developing world will feel the impacts of climate change and are feeling the impacts of climate change more acutely than uh, those in developed countries. Even though the developed countries are the ones who contributed to the problem. Yeah. Um, so we need to I think if we could think about us as a we and us more as than a you know, you versus them, and I, I think that's a vital part of, of our framework. I have one more question, because we have gone over time. Okay, yeah, sorry. Not your fault. Okay. I told you this is an interesting yeah. topic. Okay, good. <laughs> I have one more question. Okay. If you have, I really might have one or two. I do too. Do you want to go first, or should I go first? Yeah, go first. Um, for those who want to know more, um, who do you recommend listening to? What literature do you recommend reading? Yeah, I, I would uh, definitely start with the Nori's podcast, and I, I don't say that just because I'm like, oh, Nori. My colleagues, um, my co-founder Ross Kenyon, um, our creative editor, has 
from day one started this reversing climate change podcast in 2017 and I total engineer was like why are we wasting our time doing a podcast we're grumble 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 and it's like <laughs> the most like i'm so glad no one listened to me at that point <laughs> because it's the most incredible thing and now we have the other podcast as well that radica mulgaf car she's our head of supply and methodology um co- hosts and people i mean we have people from everywhere in the space interviewed and sharing their stories and their questions and their concerns and their requests so it's um if you go to nori.com forward slash podcast uh you'll find the reversing climate change podcast and the carbon removal newsroom podcast great yeah so we're spending all of this money in exploring and creating businesses in space Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the reasons for that is like hey we've got to find an alternative to where we are destroyed what we we screwed up (laughs) what we screwed up (laughs) Yeah. What's your thought on that? Twofold. Twofold. Oh and my I god, I thought I was stumping you. I've been trying for twenty six minutes? minutes to stump you. <laughs> no, you can't. This okay. is this I told you since I was fifteen this is all I wanted to do. <laughs> so I went deep into environmental science on on this planet and actually recently in the last three years I've just been looking at a lot at inter interplanetary sciences. Um which is just funny to take my focus away. So two folds. One, I think it's important for us to invest in it because, man, like, what else? There, we are just an incredible species. And I think there's also other dimensions that we don't really even perceive of. We're 3D or 4D even. Like, we can perceive the three dimensions of depth of physical t- space and time. But who knows what else is, we're not aware of. Right. So, yes, interplanetary space travel is a thing to invest in and multi-generational it's just like a species long effort so like all for it uh but at what time scale like what are we expecting from it it's not going to help us to avoid the effects of climate change is my personal opinion and from what i'm seeing and so a lot needs to be done on focusing on how to live in harmony in this planet because even if we were to go to another planet we would want to leverage whatever knowledge we have of this home to live in harmony on another home. If we can't do that on this one, how are we going to do it on another sure. one? <laughs> Stump question. <I> really. <laughs> this was a fun one. Thanks so much. Yeah, this was a good one. How so much fun. do you know about Link2 and the Global Investing Conference? A, l- a little bit. So I was, doing <laughs> some, I was doing some research before I came here, uh, and I was like, man, I wish, uh, I wish we were like had something to offer some of your accredited investors and early investors but we're in that VC round we've just raised our series A and going to go into series B and cool. yeah. in time we'll keep in touch yeah yeah <laughs> if anything climate change is a big problem everybody should know about I'm happy to <laughs> share Ali thank you so much thank you Rem- remember n-o-r-i dot com there we go forward slash podcast that's right there are two pay attention listen yeah. after you hear this one and applaud yes. Nora uh, thank you so much this was such a pleasure thank you, thank you. Thank you.